Welcome to Sparkle Storytime, helping bright minds and hearts across the globe sparkle. Thank you for being a part of the Sparkle Storytime family, promoting reading literacy globally. And I miss Sparkles. Thank you for being a part of my channel and for all the many likes and subscribers. Did you know each time you learn something new, it's like there's a sparkle that begins inside your mind, helping to build brand new and creative ideas? Are you ready to learn something new and let your mind sparkle? Let's get started. Welcome children. Today we'll be reading How a City Works by DJ Ward, illustrated by Violet LeMay. How does a city work? Let's find out. Some people live far away from cities. They don't live near other people. They might live on a farm or a cattle ranch. They may they might live in a cabin in the mountains or maybe on the shore of a faraway lake. But most people do live in cities. Most people live with other people right next door. Your city might have hundreds of people in it, or there might be thousands or even millions of people living there. All those people need clean water to drink. All those people want electricity. All those people need safe and clean places to live. And people need to go places. No one wants to be slowed down, and they need to be safe as they go. How can you take care of all these those people? Your city has a plan for that. Turn on the kitchen faucet. Splash! Out comes cold, clean water. But where did that water come from? Most cities get the water from lakes or rivers. But water from lakes and rivers is not safe to drink. It has tiny living things in it called microorganisms. Some microorganisms can make people sick. The, the water may have oil or other harmful chemicals in it. It might have sand, twigs, or even dead fish in it too. All of that has to come out of the water before people can drink it safely. Your city has a plan for that. Before any water goes to your house, it goes to a treatment plant. The treatment plant is kind of like an obstacle course, but for cleaning water. The water goes through all kinds of tanks, pipes, and filters. Some parts of the plant remove dirt from the water. Some take out harmful chemicals. Some get rid of the microorganisms. Water might come into the plant cloudy and green and smelling like fish, but at the end, it's ready to drink. Once the water is clean, it can be sent to your kitchen faucet. Miles and miles of pipes carry the water from the treatment plant all the way to you. But where are they? They are underground. The pipes that bring you water are underneath the streets of your town. Splash, that glass of water came a long way. You have a light bulb in your room, don't you? Flick the switch. Click. The light comes on. Your next door neighbor has a light bulb in her room, too. So does the man down the street. So does your classroom at school, in the gas station, in the grocery store. All these light bulbs run on electricity. And not just light bulbs need electricity. Of course, refrigerators, computers, TVs, and microwave ovens all need electricity to work. Construction workers need electricity to power their tools. The hospital needs it to run machines to help keep people alive. All over town, day and night, people need electricity. 
Your city has a plan for that. Somewhere in your town or maybe in another town nearby, there's a big power plant. Inside the plant, they make electricity. Some cities use wind power to make electricity. Some use the power of sunlight. But most power plants make electricity using turbines and generators fueled by natural gas, oil, or coal. Steam turns the turbine. The turbine turns a big magnet. The big magnet is surrounded by coils of wire. As the magnet turns, it makes electricity in the wires. Those wires are connected to other wires and other wires and more wires. Wires and wires and wires, miles of wires all the way from the power plant to your neighborhood, to your house, and to your light bulb. I have another question for you. I hope it's not too embarrassing. It's about toilets. You have a toilet in your bathroom, don't you? When you flush, did you ever wonder where all the yucky water and stuff goes? Your city has a special place for all that. It's called a sewage treatment plant. Your toilet is connected to a pipe. Your sink, shower, and dishwater washer drain into that pipe too. This pipe carries dirty water out of your house to a bigger pipe. The bigger pipe runs under your street. Your neighbor's dirty water goes to that same big pipe. Very big underground pipes carry all that stinky, gross, disgusting water and stuff to the sewage treatment plants. At, that, at the plant, the dirty water goes into big tanks. Heavy stuff in the water like sand, eggshells, and poo sinks to the bottom where it can be removed. Light stuff like grease or oils floats. It can be skimmed off the top. That helps, but the water is not clean yet. Other yucky stuff like pee and tiny bits of poop is still mixed in there. Did you know that some microorganisms like to eat that stuff? It sounds gross, but it's true, so the plant puts them to work. The dirty water goes through a tank full of good, the good microorganisms. They eat the yucky stuff right out the water. After that, the plant gets rid of any dangerous microorganisms in there. Now, the water is ready. It can go back into rivers, lakes, or the ocean without harming wildlife. What was the last thing you threw away? A candy wrapper? An empty cereal box? Maybe a dirty tissue? Imagine if you couldn't throw it away. Imagine if you had to keep all of your family's garbage. You might have to stuff it all in your room. Or maybe you would make piles of it in your yard. It wouldn't take long for your house and yard to be full of garbage. All the people in your city are making trash every day. Imagine if all those people had nowhere to put it. Imagine if they just jumped th dumped their garbage in the street. Your city would become a big mess. Even worse, it would make people sick to have all that trash around. So your city has a plan. Trash trucks move around the city. They collect garbage from homes and hospitals, schools and stores, restaurants, office buildings, and gas stations. They collected from all over town. Some of the trash is still useful. It can be made into something else. Glass, cardboard, metal cans, and different kinds of plastic can be recycled. Special trucks pick up this kind of trash and take it to a recycling plant. At the plant, the recyclable trash gets sorted. The glass, the cardboard, the metal, and the plastics go into separate piles. The different materials get bundled up and sent away to companies that can reuse them. The companies turn the recycled trash into new things. New bottles, new cans, new boxes, even new carpet, car bumpers, and toothbrushes. 
The garbage that can't be recycled goes to a different place. It's called a sanitary landfill. A sanitary landfill is the place where trash can be safely buried. The landfill has clay or even a layer of plastic at the bottom that keeps dirty water from seeping out. Each day new trash comes to the landfill. Each day a layer of soil is put over the new trash. Covering the trash with soil keeps it from spreading germs that could make people sick. It also keeps animals from getting into it. Isn't that a much better plan than keeping all that trash in your room? In a city, rain can be a problem. The ground is almost all covered by pavement. Water can soak into grass or dirt, but it can't soak into pavement. So when it rains, water just runs across the pavement. If too much rain comes at once, it can cause a flood. The water could flood into people's houses. But guess what? Your city has a plan for stormwater. Streets in the city are not flat. They are higher in the middle than they are near the curbs. This makes stormwater run off the street towards the curbs. Curbs guide the water towards storm drains. Stormwater falls through the drains into large underground pipes. The pipes carry stormwater to nearby streams. Once in the stream, the water can flow away from the city without causing a flood. Some people in the city have no streams nearby in places like that. Stormwater pipes lead to areas where the ground is low. The low place may not might not be a pond or it might be a grassy park. Stormwater can soak those places without flooding people's houses. Thousands of vehicles move around the city each day. Cars and trucks, motorcycles and buses are all moving in different directions. Without a plan, driving in the city would be slow. It would be hard to get anywhere. And it would be dangerous. Vehicles would be running into each other all the time people would get hurt. So your city has a plan. Traffic lights and stop signs keep people from running into each other. Ramps make it easier for cars to get on and off highways. When trains come through town, bridges over railroad tracks keep the traffic moving. Bike lanes help keep people safe from traffic as they ride. Want to find a safe place across the road? Use a crosswalk. Or a walking bridge. Buses, subways, and passenger trains help people get around the city without having to drive. When they don't drive, there are fewer cars on the road. That's less traffic. That's less pollution from cars, too. A lot has to happen for a city to be a good place to live. And that takes a lot of people doing lots of different jobs. Some people clean the water. Other people make electricity for s electricity. Some take care of the trash. Others design roads and bridges. And still other people keep everything running and fix things when they break. Without all those people working together, the city just can't run. People working together, that is how a city works best. The end. Thank you for watching.